Hi guys, welcome to uh, part two of um, yesterday's buy-in trip. Uh, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. As you know, or as I just said, um, I went buying up to Cavartha Castle yesterday and I bought that much stock I had to split it into two videos. Well, I got a couple of uh, pieces here I bought for the children and I got some really nice little pieces put aside. You saw the whole collection of work in stock. Now, I understand there was nothing jump up and down spectacular worth fortunes there. However, at the same time, you know, there was 20 pieces, maybe more, that cost a pound or two that were all worth between 10 and 30 pounds. And that's just good business sense, guys. Good business model. You buy like that all the time, you'll have no trouble selling it, and you'll make money. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the other half of the buy-in and I am going to start with some pieces I bought um, whether I sell them on or whether I give them to the children yet I haven't decided. Now first set I have here is a wooden croquet set. Now it's all wood, the balls are wood, the sticks, the clubs, absolutely everything except the hoops. The hoops are enameled or that coated metal. Now this full set here, guys, in the, in the bag, cost me two pounds. Now if you're after croquet sets, the ones you're after is the ones in the wooden box with the London makers. And you know, you can be up under pound, 200 pound for a croquet set then. Um, however, I wasn't going to leave a good set like this there for two quid when I can, worst case scenario, I can sell it out for 10, 20 pounds or I can give it to the children if this rain ever goes away and they can play it and when they get fed up of it then sell it for 10 or 20 pounds either way i'm on a winner guys two quid for a really nice croquet croquet uh, set and i've no doubt it didn't belong in this bag originally um because it doesn't all fit in tidy so what i would say is it probably came in a box and they've stuffed it into a, an available bag however two pound that's a seriously good buy same stall, again £2 was a cricket set. Now we have two cricket bats, we have the stumps, we have the pegs, we have everything. Inside there we have some cricket balls and whatever else, yeah, whatever else we need to play the game. Now these are a bit worn, the handles are a bit tatty on them. However, I'll do one or two things. I'll either re cover the handles with some rubber tape or something or I'll take them off and just leave them down to the um, the cord. Now again I got options. You want to buy a full set like this you're talking a bit of money. I'm going to let the kids play with it for a while. When they get fed up again it'll go for 10 or 20 pound for the set. It's two bats, it's the stumps, it's the pegs, it's absolutely everything. For two quid guys again you know you couldn't go Tesco or Asda or Walmart or wherever you shop and buy a plastic set for a toddler for two quid and I got really nice pieces there, solid wood, four pound for the two, croquet set and a cricket set. Really the kids are going to love playing with them and then they'll go. I'll sell them on at the later stage. Still drinking my hot chocolate guys. <laughs> right so I'm now going to move on to um, a couple of slightly better pieces. Now first things first, we have here a beautiful, exquisite French crystal uh, model of a squirrel. And I already know those glass collectors of you out there who are watching this already know who made this. Beautiful little thing. Look at the colour on that crystal, is stunning. Yep, it's Baccarat. Baccarat, Baccarat, whichever way you want to pronounce it. There we go, fully stamped on the base guys, Bagra of France. Now, age wise, let me see, Bagra of France, but it doesn't actually uh, give me any indication to age in it, so I'm going to have to look up the stamps to see how long this stamp's been in use. But I'd probably say it's 1970s, I'd guess, something like that. Now it's got a little bruise by here on the uh, base, 
um, but that really is nothing. I paid four pound for it. It's backer of crystal, guys. Whether you class it as a paperweight or just a little figure of a squirrel, either way, it doesn't matter for backer crystal. I'm not being funny. You know, it's a name that's known all over the world and it's one of the best. It's certainly up there with Lalique. So, Bakra, St. Louis, Lalique, you know, they're the names to look for. Right. I don't know how many of you remember, a few days ago I bought that dish, that beautiful dish. It looked a little like Cabo de Monte, but it turned out to be Ernst Bourne. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyhow, I bought a figure today by the same maker. Again, Ernst Bourne. Um, we have a fox modelled as some sort of scholar or Victorian gentleman or maybe a judge. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Now, it's a spill vase. It has the uh, vase at the rear there for the spills. Now, it is a fully stamped piece. Now, I had to research the mark because I wasn't aware of the mark. Now, what we have is an anchor in underglazed blue and then some impressed letters. Lots of people use the blue anchor, um, however, the EB and then the S, but the EB is Ernst Born uh, with the blue anchor. So that's who made that, so that's a valuable figure guys. I would imagine that figure is north of £50. And uh, considering I bought her in this morning for a fiver, and it is in mint condition. And not only is it in mint condition, I have the rest of the set coming. Apparently there were six or seven of these made in different characters, all with the fox dressed up as different people. And I have the rest of the set coming. This was just a sample piece. I bought this one uh, for a fiver. I think it's worth 50, 60, 70 pound of anybody's money. Um, and I'm gonna have the other five or six now next week. They're all going up there for me. So that is rare. It's beautiful, it's perfect, it may not be your cup of tea or it may be, you may be jumping up and down saying I want it. But that's going on my website, I'd probably price it up about £75 once I've done my research. If I find someone else is selling it for 30 quid, then I'll obviously drop my price accordingly. Um, but I can't see it. That's nice. If you watched yesterday's video, you saw Sandra having a little pout. Um, shouting at me saying if I fell in shit I'd come out. What did you say? No, it wasn't. You said someone else. Sucking your thumbs? Aye. If I fell in shit I'd come out sucking my thumbs or something stupid like that. She was stood at the side of me and a woman's asking a gentleman on the stall, is that silver? Is it plate? And he said it doesn't really matter. It is toast. And literally you can see it there. It's all split open. It's, it's naft. It's a scrapper. And he said it's worth a pound. So, when he'd finished, I said, could I have a look? And, lo and behold, there's a full set of hallmarks there, going across by there, guys. They're very worn, but there is a London hallmark. Can't read the date. Um, so we have a solid silver vase. So I said to her, how much do you want? And she said, well, he said it's worth a pound, so give me a pound. So I give her a pound, and I walked away very happy. Solid silver vase for a pound. Um, it's a scrapper, it's only worth the metal value, but for a pound you know exactly where that's going, I don't even need to repeat it. Next then we've had a silver necklace with a sort of St. Christopher pendant, but this is quite unusual. Now we have, I think it's the St. Christopher on the uh, one side, and on the reverse I don't know if this is like commemorating all our achievements, but we have an aeroplane, a ship, a train, and an automobile. Really, really unusual little medallion. So, anyway, I paid £1.50 for that, guys. And then I have a selection of solid silver coins. We have a half crown, we have a Victorian shilling, we have a little sixpence and then we have a load of early three pences. Now anything before 1921 in British silver is full silver. 
As you can see there's two, four, six, eight, two, four, six. There's eight little three pences by there. And they date from 1914 right the way through consecutive years, throughout the war all the way up. Um, the shilling is mi uh, early Victorian, that's a young Victoria's head. Uh, even though it's very rubbed, I can make out her head. And this one is a half silver. So anything from 1921 to 1946 in British silver is 500 grade. That half crown, if it was 1920, would be full silver because it's 1938, it's 500 grade. So half the weight of that is silver. But that is still probably going to work out a quarter of an ounce of silver. So all in all, I'm really pleased with that. So that's the silver, guys. It's not tumps and tumps and tumps over the moon with our bars and that's a good weight to the bars um, that little necklace and pendants fine and the coins there's a couple of coins in there uh, there's specifically the 14 through to 18 and in extremely good condition and obviously they have significance so I'm really considering selling those on as opposed to uh, putting them in my pot um, but we'll see so, that's not the end of this video, my guys. So, I've got a few more things to show you, including my star buy of the day. So, bear with me. Okay, so, here we have a stunt scooter. Has the brake at the back, all in polished aluminium. The handles turn all the way around, the wheel spins all the way around for them to do stunts. These are special stunt scooters and they're not cheap. They're up between 50 and 100 pound for these scooters, depending on where you go. The wheels are all interchangeable on them and so forth. And the kids, you know, they're crazy with them. Now, that is a particularly nice one and it's probably a 70, 80 pound scooter. I paid four pound for that for my son because he broke his scooter um, a few weeks back and I haven't replaced it yet. Then there's a little fold up fishing chair, if you like, or camping chair. Um, I did say no, I didn't want it. However, Sandra kicked off and started stamping her feet saying it's only £2, I want it, so I bought it for her. She offered me the £2 for it and I said shut up, um, it is what it is. So we now got a little fold up chair for doing, for Sandra to sit on when we're doing the boots. I was thinking more for you to sit on while we were doing the boots. And guys, we have my star lot of the day. Look at that. Need I say a thing? Art Nouveau, beautiful, original fire. Now, it's missing one or two pieces. It should have had the front bars here, and it would have had a little plate here and possibly here. Now, they're not impossible to replace. They won't cost a fortune. Um, and you won't have to put um, brand new parts on. You can get the uh, originals of fires that have been reclaimed at knackered. They'll still sell you the parts. Now this is untouched. Um, so a lot of these now you get, you'll find them, they've been polished back to the base of the metal and then they have that fire grade wax on them. And they look beautiful, but they're just plain gray. This has the amazing Art Nouveau design. You can see it here, it's absolutely beautiful. And you can see what I'm talking about with the Art Nouveau, it's all flowing and you know, all organic is the word I'm looking for. It's not complete, as I've said, it's missing a couple of pieces, um, but it is what it is. It cost me 20 quid, guys. Now I have found the exact fire that's been restored, so not even in original condition. Um, and they have stripped it back to bare metal and waxed it. Now granted they've got that piece, that piece and the bars. But they want, with the tax, £420. Now if you want the original fire and the original look, then here it is. And you can buy these couple of pieces probably for £40 or £50. I think restoring them, they're devaluing them. As opposed to adding value. I'm going to turn it around for you now so you can have a little look at the other side. Okay, so here we have the reverse side. If you look here, you'll see a series of numbers. Number 22.30.39.mp. 
Now it's a bit rusty on the back, but that is absolutely fine. That's what you want to see. And there is a split here. Again, that's nothing. It's behind the back of the fire. You could have that bit welded tacked shut, no problem. But you can see there's no major damage to this fire whatsoever. It is clearly original. And I love the way this Art Nouveau design has been embossed into the cast iron. So there we have it guys. That is my star by, in all honesty, in my opinion, of the week. I've had some really good pieces. Um, now I rate this, I may get the missing pieces myself. Now if I do, I'd put this up for £400 uh, myself as an original original untouched condition uh, Victorian fire or Edwardian fire, it's about 1900, 1910 with this Art Nouveau design now the people who are selling the other one restored, I'm going to put the photographs and that in at the end of the video their description dates it to 1890 and they are a reclamation firm they ripped them out of houses but I tend to go Art Nouveau is closer to 1900, 1910 and 1890 but I'm not going to argue with them over a few years. It is what it is. It's period. They have the exact same fire with the exact same design embossed. They've just stripped theirs back, sandblasted it and waxed it. But I find this is much more beautiful. This beautiful finish on there can't be replaced. Um, you strip that off as far as I'm concerned. You just will have a brand new fire. I love the look. And well, it's gorgeous. Um, selling it on may be a problem as in shipping it I haven't figured out yet how to ship it um, but I'll certainly offer it out on my website for collection at the moment and then I'm going to have to look into um, obviously getting a courier that will carry it because you're talking 30 or 40 kilos of cast iron certainly Royal Mail wouldn't touch it there we are the guys um, for those of you who haven't seen yesterday's video just seeing today's video you can see really some nice pieces we came from Cavartha Castle in Merthyr the grandest uh, castle around here as far as I'm concerned owned by the Crochets built by the Crochet family in 1810-1820 somewhere around there um, who operated and owned steel, steel mines um, or steel works wherever they were so some really really beautiful pieces coming out up there at the moment it's not a very big car boat sale it really isn't but I am certainly one of the better buyers up there. There really has been some nice pieces out and I just hope the uh, summer carries on to pay out in the quality items. I love the fire, you know what's happening with the silver. Barker Crystal Squirrel and the uh, Ernst Born figure. Some really good quality pieces. They certainly are good enough, every one of them, for the website so I'm more than happy with that. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing this little video guys. If you have, I would appreciate a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications to be notified so you can be first to see our uh, videos as we post them. We do try and post daily. Uh, it is a challenge to get a video out every day, I can assure you that. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of work involved, but I love it. I really do. Thank you very much for all your support guys. Uh, you'll find us on Facebook, uh, Antiques Arena. We're on eBay, just run a search for Antiques Arena Clearance. That's where I clear everything I don't really want on my website. Um, and you'll find us on our own website then for our better pieces, antiquesarena.com. Hope you enjoyed guys. Bye for now.